Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So we're having a little bit of fun here. I've got the X2 drill apart. This is the rigid drill I got in that bundle of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> the Kijiji deal for 25 bucks. Anyways, so the speed control doesn't work on this drill, which kind of sucks. But there is hope. I uh, also had switched the casings around on uh, the impact drivers, and they are both uh, different models. And actually, the one that actually still works is the really heavy duty one with a triple gear train uh, in it, so <laughs> it's the better one of the two, anyhow. So, who cares? Um, but, anyhow, um, I was looking up the parts for a replacement speed control switch for this, and I also looked up the parts for the speed control switch out of the impact gun that has the buggered motor. And the part numbers are different, and although the switch in this X2 drill is compatible with a lot of drills. Of course, they don't mention impact driver in there, but this is the impact driver switch. And if you look at the two of them, they look exactly the same. And in fact, they use the same voltage. Uh, they're the same part number, R157, R157, uh, both at 25 amps. And if you look at the main part numbers, there is a slight difference, uh, 211, 5, 5, 1, 6 for the drill, and uh, 27, 11, uh, which would be the same starter, 55, 0, 06 uh, out of the impact. So even though there's a slight difference that way, this should theoretically work fine because everything about it otherwise, they're the same. The heat sinks are, well, this one's got a little thingy on here. This is just a piece of rubber though. Uh, but I can peel that piece of rubber right off actually and like this this friggin easy. Because I don't even need the piece of rubber. And then that's probably what the difference is in the part number. It's just a piece of rubber. Anyways, um, so I'm going to unsolder this first off camera because it is a bit of a pain in the axe to get it off. But um, I will do the reinstallation, soldering it on and so on for you guys. And then we'll put the drill back together. Now this thing does come apart really easy. Just yank all the screws out, including the screws for the beak. Um, and then this half of the cover uh, will come off no problem. And uh, you'll see there's also the security tag. We don't need that. That's stupid. Anyways. Um, and uh, even the battery connector sliders, they're the same orientation. They go in the exact same way. So that is uh, something else that's the same. So what the hell? Let's do this. Don't go away. I'll uh, be right back as soon as I get this unhooked. And we're back. Anyways, so we've got this old one off. Toss that to the side. Now we've got to put the new one on. And, by the way, do not cut these wires. They don't give you enough extra. This is like a really precision thing with them for some reason. Um, and try not to bend up on the contacts either. So I'm going to have to put this back in like so. Because I can't cut the wire. And it's not going to feed back through the hole. So I'm going to have to actually surface top um, solder it. Which is fine. It'll be really super strong anyhow so i'm not worried about that at all so let's get this thing soldered back on here and negative is negative and positive is positive the switch is marked by the way negative and positive and so are your wires That's one. Right that gets hot on the fingers. Okay, this is where I'm going to need uh, some weight. I need some weight. I need some weight. There we go. Sorry, this is going to block your view a bit, but I got to get this soldered on here. Ah, oh, crap. They just can't do anything simple here. Oh, 
that's not gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this off camera and get my wife to help. Hang on. Okay guys, we're back. Time to test. I've got my lithium ion battery on here. It's just more convenient right now. It's all plugged in. So let's see if our speed control works. Oh, lovely. Yeah, they're not the same part, are they? I think they are. Now. It's just a matter of, there we go. Oh, and the brake works perfect too. Look at that. Let's check the other gear out. And we got reverse too. Everything works perfect. So, for you people out there that want to know, though there is a slight number difference, okay, 25 amp is the same. R157 down below, 24 volts DC, the same. 211, or sorry, 2711, the first four numbers are the same. Okay, now this switch here that's now hooked up, that's off that other impact gun. Okay. And, uh... This one here, the original out of this drill, is 2711-5516, okay, versus 5506, 25 amp, 24 volts DC, R157, boom, boom, chickalala, and the only difference between the two damn switches was this chunk of rubber was on the impact one, which wasn't on this. So, if you've got the same type of situation going on, you got a spare drill to gut. That's a good way to do things in my books. Because um, I really didn't feel like spending $25 US on a friggin' switch. It's like, I don't need a new switch. I just, I've got a switch here. It should work, you know, in theory. And uh, theory is correct. Now, uh, one thing I do want to point out though, this is the motor out of the uh, other impact gun. This is the light duty impact gun. Um, the guns look exactly the same. On the outside, you cannot tell them difference other than uh, obviously the, uh, the model numbers are different. Uh, this is the one with the lighter duty gear train. It's got a very small pinion. The other one's, you know, bigger and chunkier. Um, this motor kind of like, you can, I don't know if you can hear that, but listen. That rattling is generally not a good sound. And uh, so that motor is actually shot. And by the way, these are about 60 bucks. Well, 56 bucks US. And it's like, well, I don't care. I didn't need two impact gun drivers anyway. So that concludes this video. It works. It's great. Um, before we go completely, though, um, I will reassemble for you guys. Um, so you can see how this thing goes back together, actually. So let's twist and manipulate wires and figure out how the heck this actually does go back in. It came apart, it shall go back together. It's just a bit of a pain in the neck. Mm, gotta give that a little bend. That gets a little bend. Because that's gonna actually feed down into the slot. This is where I need better lighting some days. in um, like so okay that parts in and we need our transmission switch gotta make sure that sucker's uh, actually in there properly so we'll put it back in the low gear
exactly the same. So it's just a matter of manipulating. Okay, so first screw was right there. It takes a bit of messing around, but getting it back together is not a huge deal. monkeyed up. I gotta get that stupid clip back in. Not like I really need it, but you know, you gotta kind of put the drill together all the way. Actually, this one I can leave in, which will actually help. Tiny piece of friggin' metal, man. Talent. The tricky part is remembering the little tiny things here. Where they gotta go. <coughs> Bingo. I win. By the way, um, so that you know, there's a cap that goes on the back with four screws. Those screws are a different length, so keep them with the cap. The same as the screws for the front metal nose, they're also a different length. Uh, so I put mine up over here because they're a different length than these. Uh, you want to make sure you get all of them in the right places, so don't mix that stuff up, man. Otherwise, it's going to suck and you're going to be taking crap apart because screws are too or, you know, if it's not long enough, you're going to have a problem too. 
So, then we squash this back together and this, uh, does that matter? Actually, I don't think it does. I'll be back. Okay, guys. Oh, this is such a crazy thing. So I had to pull the switch back out and re-rotate the wires so that the black and the red would actually go into this slot down here, which is a real pain in the neck. So you got to make sure you twist it around the right way, get those two wires to feed down there, then you got to manipulate your switch back into your um, directional and locking switch. Now these two wires here, your black goes here and your red will go here and they go into little grooves here. All right, so let me just point out the grooves here for you. Let's see if I can zoom in on this for you actually, a little bit. So they go into these grooves, that's got a lock in place. And then this will behave itself from there. And uh, make sure you get your uh, speed control. There's a little tab on your speed control plate, the black plate. Okay, make sure it goes into the hook properly, and uh, if you can, have it either forward or back, whichever, but get it in there so that it's in the, there's like a little slot thing that it fits into. So, next thing we got to do is put the casing back on here, and if everything goes well this time, we should not have any issues whatsoever. So you got to line up your battery cover thing here. Get that down, manipulate this, once again, it's a bit of a pain to do, so I'll, I'll zoom out a bit here for you. This can be a little bit tricky, and you gotta... everything has its little place in here. Gotta kind of get it to all comply. There we go. Little push and twist. That's in. Now, see that closes perfect now. So we're gonna put this bugger on first. So I guess it does have a bit of a direction to it. Okay, so you've got four screws, and these are the longer ones. Now, don't reef the crap out of the screws, okay? You are going into plastic. And yes, I just figured that out. We just... This is kind of a good thing. Oh, little stupid piece of metal for your bit holder. It doesn't affect the operation of the drill, but if you ever wanted to use it, you kind of need that metal piece to do that with. I'm trying not to take this whole thing apart. There we go. Ah, in she goes. You know what? We're going to lock that in place. Okay, so don't reef the hell out of them. Put them in snug though, but don't reef the hell out of them. And when you tighten this cap, do it as an X pattern. So pick a corner and go to the opposite corner on the other side. So you get proper even pressure in. And then go ahead and do those last two screws. I know some of you are like, this could have been a shorter video if you sped stuff up. I don't feel like speeding stuff up on this. 
Because some people can't pay attention properly when you speed stuff up. So, I can't make all of you happy, but some people actually like to see the entire process at one speed. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay. So now I'll put the rest of the handle screws in. And our other battery that we've got on charge trying to repair here is doing pretty good. It's at 22.03 volts, so that's good out of 18. Because your batteries always charge higher. And we've got uh, 1,111 milliamps and going. So by the time this battery's done, that'll give me six batteries I've recovered so far. So I think I more than got my 25 bucks worth out of this deal, guys. Now, these tools are mostly going to be used for at home because I have drills and stuff like that at work in the shop. And uh, so I didn't need new ones for at work, but I need something for at home for doing stuff. And these will actually fit the bill quite nice. Okay. Now, front nose piece screws. Now you guys saw how I took this drill apart. And that's all you need to do to take it apart. You don't have to go into little bits and friggin' pieces. You know, unless you want to take the gear train apart and clean all the old crap out of it. And re-grease it but the uh, grease that actually they put in these things is quite good actually so you don't have to worry about that this will be the last time this drill comes apart because for what I paid for this stuff, I'm really not going to buy repair parts. Okay. Time for test number two. Unlock. sound there. strong clutch, I'll tell you. Yeah. It's 
Probably you could use a lube job. Ah, another day. Maybe. Good drill, though. Nice. All right. So, appears it runs. Appears the speed control is fine. Switches are definitely 100% compatible. Some stupid little piece of friggin' rubber is probably all that part number difference is. It's all it is, a little friggin' chunk of rubber. Because with this rubber in here, that switch would not have gone in. Take the rubber off, it went fine. Anyway, that's it. That's all. Um, I guess I should actually, at some point, re-lubricate the uh, gear train on this thing. This drill has been uh, well abused and well used, you know. But uh, she's still going, and uh, we now have speed control again. Awesome. So, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one.